In this lecture, we are going to review the 6th dynasty in ancient Egypt. The 6th dynasty was the last major epoch of the Old Kingdom time period. The dynasty witnessed a further reduction in the power of the central government and an increased power of the regional governors, called the nomarchs. This process started in the later stages of the 5th dynasty and continued on in the 6th. A reduction in a centralized government is certainly not something unique to ancient Egypt. There are numerous examples of this throughout history. The collapse of Charlemagne's empire gave rise to powerful local feudal lords. A loose comparison might even be made to the growth of the United States in the 19th century. Washington, D.C. had less and less control the farther you moved west. Territorial governors and local sheriffs were the real power. You might know this better as the Wild West. By the early 20th century, the federal government began to exert greater control over the West. After the last pharaoh of the 5th dynasty died, a brief period of chaos ensued. Two warring factions of the royal family vied for control of Egypt. Teti was apparently the compromise, and so he became the first pharaoh of the 6th dynasty. During Teti's reign, high officials were beginning to build monuments that amazingly rivaled that of the pharaoh. This was yet another sign that the nobility were gaining in their power and wealth. This trend was one of the main factors that brought the Old Kingdom to an end. It is not exactly clear how long Teti reigned, but the majority opinion is that his rule lasted around 12 years. Monotho states that Teti was murdered by his palace bodyguards. It is possible that they may have been acting on the order of Teti's successor, Yuzakari. Teti was buried in the pyramid he constructed at Saqqara. So again, Yuzurkari ascended to the throne after the death of Teti. Very little is known about Yuzurkari's reign, as it lasted only a few years. Only a few artifacts have been found that are inscribed with his name and titles. His relationship to the other pharaohs is not well understood either. One theory states that Yuzurkari was a legitimate ruler and successor, while another presents Yuzurkari as someone who seized the throne by force. Yuzurkari's tomb has never been located. The shortness of his reign likely means his complex was never finished, and even perhaps looted later on for materials. A number of hypotheses have been floated around, but these are mostly pure speculation. Pepi I was the third pharaoh in the sixth dynasty of Egypt. Pepi was the son of Teti. Pepi's reign was marked by aggressive expansion into Nubia. Trade flourished with areas such as Lebanon and the Somali coast. The trend of an increasingly powerful nobility continued during Pepi's reign, and as a result, the decline of the Old Kingdom began to accelerate. Regional governors asserted even more authority and influence than before. Similar to other pharaohs in the 6th dynasty, Pepi I constructed his pyramid complex in South Saqqara. Also similar to previous pharaohs, pyramid texts are inscribed in the pyramid substructure. Many of these texts are spells that deal with the pharaoh's ascent to the sky, and of course his busy, busy afterlife. Morenra I ascended to the throne after the death of his father, Pepi I. Similar to his father, Morenra continued to expand into Nubia. A rock inscription was discovered that showed the pharaoh receiving the submission of the lower Nubian rulers. The Egyptians likely reduced Nubia to gain further access to gold, granite, and many other materials. Morenra I constructed his pyramid at Saqqara. Today it consists mostly of ruins though his burial chamber was found inside and in relatively good condition. The ceiling of the chamber was covered with stars. In addition, a mummy was discovered inside. Modern scholars now believe that this is indeed the mummy of Morenra. At just six years of age, Pepi II ascended to the throne after the death of his father, Morenra I. Scholars used to believe that Pepi II was the son of Pepi I and the half-brother of Morenra. However, lately experts believe that Pepi II was in fact the son of Morenra. In any event, Pepi II is noted for the extreme length of his reign. According to Monotho, the pharaoh reigned for 94 years. Modern scholars tend to doubt this and have revised this downwards to around 64 years. Regardless, he is not only the longest reigning monarch in Egyptian history, but all of history. The unnaturally long reign of Pepi II contributed even more to the power of the nobility. In fact, the nomarchs became so powerful that the pharaoh himself married one of the governor's daughters and then promoted her brother to vizier. In addition, nomarchs no longer had to pay any taxes, and their office became hereditary. 
This had the natural effect of increased competition between the governors and administrators. Pepe II built one of the largest pyramid complexes of the 5th and 6th dynasties. The complex consists of a main pyramid, three queen's pyramids, a valley temple, and a mortuary temple, which is linked by a covered causeway. The causeway ran through the desert, from the Nile, all the way up to the pyramid. After Pepe II died, the kingdom began to rapidly fall apart, especially as the power of the nomarchs continued to rise. His son, Marenre II, ruled for just a year, and other than that, very little is known about his reign. After that, Nechukari became the seventh and final ruler of the Sixth Dynasty. As a result, some Egyptologists considered Nechukari to be the last pharaoh of the Old Kingdom period. After Nechukari's death, the kingdom came to an end, ushering in the First Intermediate Period, and we will get to that in the next video.